Alright. Time for a Nocturne game. This will be the start of the beginner series for season 13. So we are playing in low elo. Because, well, beginner series makes sense, right? They will not be playing in higher ratings. So we can expect the same from my team as we can expect from yours, basically, is the idea. And I'll show you how to do it. Now, there will be a playlist in the description for this beginner series. This will be the first one, so there is only going to be one video in it for now. But uh, there will be a new video every day for the beginner series for a bit. Until I basically cover all the jungle champions for this season. And uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe for that if you don't want to miss any. You can check the playlist as well, see if you've missed any. And let's get into it. Now, starting out here, I'll be against a Warwick with lethal tempo. I do have to be a bit careful with that matchup. Because I kind of lose those 1v1s. I do have a spell shield to where I can block like his uh, ult perhaps or his fear from his W. But I do have to be careful of the fact that he can out 1v1 me when he gets to low HP. That could definitely be a problem. For Nocturne's skills, going over them quickly. The Q is this shadow path that you see. You want to hit enemy champions with this because it attaches to them and then creates a path constantly. That you can use to chase them down because it gives additional attack speed and uh, also bonus damage when you stand on it and bonus movement speed so it makes chasing very easy don't use your q over walls here if, if, if you can in this case it doesn't matter but if they are pushed in they can see your q path so it's something to keep in mind for your w you it basically just gives a ton of attack speed and is a spell shield it gives a flat 30 it goes up with ranks and um if you block a spell with it, you will be able to get that passive attack speed doubled for a little bit. So it can be very valuable. Then your E is going to be a fear tether that I'll show you here in a second. Let's go over here. So you basically just use this on anything. It does some damage over time. And then when it procs here at the end of that, it fears the target. So that way you'll be able to uh, well, get some hits off. Now, the way I'm pathing here is I'm just going to go for a full clear. I would always recommend a full clear, um, especially on Nocturne. You need those levels. You need the experience. It is the most consistent thing you can do. So definitely try to use that to your advantage. If you want to be a little bit more efficient with your clear, taking two points in Q is advised. But I just mainly wanted to show you here how the fear works while I was talking about it. So, yeah. There we go. Pretty solid full clear. Good HP. Don't really need the potion, uh, but it is a Warwick in the early game, so I definitely, for 1v1s, do want to have that. He is showing topside. I see him, but I'm finishing that thing off real quick. I'm gonna respond here. We're gonna hit the war. Actually, we're, okay, we're hitting Mundo first. We just flashed. And we fear this guy. The. That's fine. Flashed forward, that's okay. Um, with Mundo, you have to keep in mind, if I fear Mundo, Mundo passive, this guy does not see anything. That's worked for me. I used my spell shield there to block the knockback she was going to do. She was going to try to, like, Q knockback something. Right, here, we just push this out real quick, so this guy gets to back after finishing this wave off. And then we call it a good job, because he rotated to help us out, and we are happy. Uh, but... On Mundo, I didn't use my E on Mundo because Mundo passive will block the fear for my E. The Mundo passive gets him, uh, gets, uh, allows him to deny one CC hit for that initial hit. So if I E him, it's not going to work because it's not going to give me anything, if that makes sense. So that's why I didn't use my E on him and held it for the Warwick because it's more relevant on the Warwick uh, since it allows me to hit him. For a while while he can't hit me back and warwick's kit is resolved around or like revolves around hitting you back to gain hp back to gain an advantage in a 1v1 so for that reason i didn't press my fear on mundo because it wouldn't work and it used it for the warwick so i'd have a better chance at 1v1ing him while he couldn't hit me back and thus can't regenerate his hp now based off like after that entire sequence there we are just going to simply go back to clearing our camps we rush the cdr boots here the reason we do this it's not gonna matter the reason we do this is because it gives a ton of ability haste early ability haste is a very valuable stat because this twinning ability haste gives you 17 percent cdr the more ability haste you have the less valuable the stat becomes 
So this stat diminishes. So the more ability haste I get, like above like 50, 60, it starts to go down drastically to how much value you actually get out of the ability haste. So the early ability haste works really well with your ultimate cooldown and then also the ultimate hunter sex on top of that. That's pretty much all the cooldown you're gonna need for a while. And then to like basically give your ultimate a very good cooldown and use that to your advantage. Sequence the second clear here. After finishing the full clear, you're basically always looking to get that full clear done. It's very, very important. And this will hit me level 6 as well. And after this, with level 6, we're just gonna... As soon as we get the ultimate, we are just gonna look for a gank. Every time. The more, the better. I could, in theory, dive this guy. It would cost him a Colossal Wave, and he isn't 6 yet. Oh, nope, never mind. The second he hit 6, it was not worth it anymore because the Mundo will press his ult and then at that point I'll be in trouble because he can start healing a lot. He is getting quite low though. At this HP... As long as he could tank it. There's Mundo ult. Exactly what I was talking about. Gonna hold the wave here. We need to play it a bit slow. Just stall him out, basically. There we go. No need to rush it. If we're gonna dive a Mundo that's constantly regenerating with his ultimate, if you rush that down, it's gonna end very, very poorly for you. But that's definitely not something you wanna do. It seems that Timo does not want this wave, so I'll take it. I have no idea where Warwick is. I do have to keep that in mind, actually. Let's slide this one out real quick. Warwick could fight me right now, and he would have a pretty good chance of beating me, because I'm quite low on HP. But I do have a quite a good advantage. Oh, a ward. Interesting. But you see with the dive there, I was not going to commit to a Mundo, because one, I can't CC him due to his passive. Oh, fair enough, he traded for Dragon. That makes sense. Uh, and two, he's, his ult's going to give him constant HP regeneration. If he was still level 5, I would have just ult dove him under turret, because then his ult wouldn't matter, and he wouldn't have had any regeneration. But the second I basically walked up the ult, he got his... Um, he got his healing, or he got his ult so he could start healing. He doesn't have like a set HP bar, he's gonna regenerate constantly. Which is very annoying to kill under a turret, so that's not what I'm looking for. We knew very recent information here that the Warwick's just on Dragon. So we are gonna look for his topside camps as much as possible. His Red's gonna respawn, his Raptors has respawned. Warwick, we see him bot lane. At this moment in time, we can really easily take a lot from this guy. And then we're gonna just transition this into a top ult, probably. But we're basically punishing him for the fact that he did Dragon. Now, I could, in theory, have walked to the fight there. But the fight, I mean, I this is a consistent thing I can do. I can just take all of these camps for the fact that he did Dragon. Because he's never going to get here in time. Which means it's going to be more like consistent over a longer period of games. To just deny the enemy jungler a bunch, you know? I don't know if this guy's going to walk up. I'm just going to go for it. All right, he flashed and he ulted. It's fine. Hit the back real quick. We have another rotation of this camp coming up, so we definitely need to make sure to do it. Or they're already up, as I took his stops to take took the time to do his topside camps. Right there, what I did cost Mundo a lot, because he he now doesn't have ult, doesn't have flash, and he's gonna get pressured for his camps. I want to clear up here. The reason I want to clear up is because my botlane has constant pressure at the moment. And the dragon is not going to be a factor. If I clear it towards the Rift Herald right here, I could just do a clear into the Rift Herald. The reason I'm not walking up to the Rift Herald just straight away here is because overall it doesn't give me much value compared to my entire jungle rotation. So I'm going to take the jungle rotation as a priority. If the Warwick would decide to do Rift Herald here, that would be fine. Obviously, I would lose the Rift Herald for that, but it means that Warwick is going to fall further and further behind for just two early game objectives, essentially. And losing out on those on a champion like Nocturne doesn't really matter because you're going to scale it out and you're going to be very, very useful regardless later on. So yeah, that's why that. Just focus on the big one, your passive and your Q kill, the small ones. So we finish these three camps here and then we have our ult back. There is the Rift Troll, that's fine. You can clearly see the effect it's having. Warwick's prioritizing objectives. I am more of a clearing champion that scales well. And I'm have I have like double his farm. This is something that will happen. Um, 
I could technically have tried to stop him from doing the Herald, but it takes him so long to do a Herald that gives him 300 gold and not that much experience. Obviously, he's going to be able to use it for like a third plate or two, but the overall value that I would like gain from just doing my extra jungle rotation is crazy. Like, I'm practically level 9. I'm two levels higher than him because of this, which is really good. But that's why I decided not to go for the Herald here. Warwick ran all the way bot lane. Interesting. Go here. I have ult, so we want to use this. Make sure to spell shield so she doesn't knock me back. Perfect. Ooh, Warwick was close on that fight on bot lane, but he didn't get it. What we know here as well, we saw these camps respawn and we saw the Warwick rotate towards bot lane, right? So we know we can instantly take these camps again and consistently punish. So these two camps are mine once again, and this is how we're gonna like expand our lead by punishing the Warwick for like not being at his camps. Obviously, right now I've lost one dragon and I've lost one Rift Herald to him getting those in the early game, but I've gained so much value out of just taking his topside camp several times that I'm actually super far ahead here. This guy's gonna be here somewhere. There he is. He doesn't have flash now. Make sure to land the Q. Perfect. Try to always, if you're going to go for a fight, if there's no relevant skill that the enemy champion has that you can block, like a hard CC, like Warwick Sphere, for example, or Warwick Ultimate, Syndra's Knockback, try to just use it on any of their abilities because it does give you the double of the passive effect. So in this case, it gives me 60% attack speed instead of 30, which is obviously quite valuable. But definitely try to use that to your advantage if you can. In this case, they're heralding mid lane. I'm just going to use this time to make sure I get top turret first so they don't get first turret at all. And we can just claim all this gold and then I can rotate down potentially here with my ultimate up now and then I can go for mid lane gank if I want to. It appears that the Warwick's going for dragon. Ah, damn. I was really hoping he would ult that. I'm gonna have to walk past this guy real quick. Because we see an we see a problem situation on bot lane, right? We have to respond to this real quick if I can. I have lethal tempo on him, so I just need my stacks on those and we're good. That one was just to clean up the bot side. I'm now gonna have to recall. I can stay on the map, but I have so much gold right now that I do not want to do that. In the situation I was just in, I had my ultimate up. So I had like a very good value or like a very good opportunity to go for a quick kill before I press recall. In that situation, I knew I was going to be able to clean it up because Lulu was low and Warwick was low. So it wasn't going to be much of a, a much of an issue. I'm also two levels higher. Like being this far ahead in experience is absolutely huge because it gives you a lot of base value, base stats. Those are very, very worth it. Every level is worth a lot of gold, basically. So... Being all that much up, even though I did have quite a bit of gold and they were... I could still do it because they were also quite low, so it was never going to be a problem. If both Warwick and Lulu were full HP, I would never have ulted to that, because then it would be a 2v1 with a lot of gold in my inventory. And at that point, it's better to just back off. Build-wise here, we are looking for Blade of the Rune King first. This is an insanely good item to pick up first. Let me hit this real quick, get the assist on this one. Perfect. Third ward. Let's go to Dragon now. At this moment in time, we've scaled up enough to the point where we just prioritize taking Dragon. For sure. And then now, we are looking to pressure him for every single camp he has. Because we are stronger than him. By a good margin, by almost three levels here. Because I'm going to get the level up now. Build's going to be up in two seconds. He's probably doing his Wolves. Also, on level 9, you want to switch to a Blue Trinket. Walk the hit there, make sure he's feared. Now we ult this guy as well, perfect. In that situation, we can use save the ult for the Syndra. She's quite low, so all I need to do is connect. And then a second, the Warwick is feared. This will give you an advantage in a Warwick matchup. Uh, if you get the fear on the guy, he won't be able to hit you back for a bit. And if you have enough damage, you'll just kill him before he's able to use his kit to constantly regenerate his HP. Now again, because we are winning against Warwick and we're pressuring him in his jungle, 
And we want to make sure that above prioritizing your own camps, I want to prioritize his. His camps are worth more to me right now than my own camps are because I can deny him a lot. He has no room to really go for any of my own camps. So if I could take my time while, while I have the chance on the map to uh, take all of his camps so he doesn't get any of it, he will never be able to close the gap on me anymore. I will be 100 CS up in no time. The Gre Kraken Slayer here. And then we go for the Black Cleaver next. The build is Bladed Rune King into Kraken Slayer every time. And then you go Black Cleaver. It gives a ton of HP, but it also gives 30 ability haste. The second you pick up the Black Cleaver, you can sell these boots and get defensive boots in the form of Mercs or Steel Caps. Because what I've mentioned earlier with the ability haste scaling poorly, it, uh, it its effects will be reduced greatly. But you also get a ton of ability haste from this, right? I still need to kill him, Caitlyn, actually. This gives you a ton of ability haste, and ability haste diminishes a lot. You saw 20 ability haste was 17%, and 30 ability haste is 23%. So it, de it the value goes down quite a bit based on that. And that's why these boots are very good for the early game stages for Nocturne, because it gives you an instant ability haste boost, plus it reduces the, the, the CDR of your summoner spells. So you can use it more frequently, more often to... Uh, um, to get more ults off in the early game. Because there's no other ability haste item that you're building for a bit. In that situation, we just use the spell shield to block his fear. So we can keep hitting him and then fear him. So he doesn't get anything done. I know this guy was going to look for that. Because this guy is constantly looking for... Uh, it's what, like, right here we see the Caitlyn walk up. Is she going to walk up? No, she's not. Okay, cool. And we're just going to push out the wave. I was initially going to wait to see if she shows... If I didn't have Rift Herald, I could have Blue Trinketed this and could have used the Vision to my advantage. Uh, you get, if you use a Herald, by the way, you get a Red or a Blue Trinket refreshed for free. It doesn't work with Warding Trinket. Something to keep in mind as well. Try to get the turret. I just want to get some bounces on the mid turret here. Uh, fair enough. Didn't have enough pressure there. At the moment, we are still looking for Warg scams consistently. We have an ult, so we can respond to any play we have to respond to. If it comes down to it. So we can take a bit of time here to just do his scams. Deny him more and more. It seems, seems to be doing quite well. Do not want to give this Warg anything anymore. I should have blocked that one. Still dead, no problem. You see Syndra here. He's got to get an ult range. He is chasing the luck, so it's not going to matter anymore. She's already dead. I don't have enough gold for this yet, unfortunately. I'm fairly low on HP, so I do have to be a bit careful here. Good assist. Ooh, okay, here. Ooh. I can't dive into this because of my HP. You don't want to risk it. I'm worth a thousand gold. If I make one mistake like that, I can easily lose on the, uh, based off that one. Oh, uh, he feared me at the end there. Okay, well, still got him. It's good. Take the recall here. Don't have ill, don't have anything. I have enough more money for my black lever, so we're going to purchase that real quick. And then you see the dragon respawning on the map here, so that's going to be our priority right now. You can clearly see, like, the way I've played this, right? I sacrificed some of the early... Because I'm a farm jungler, he's more of a pressure-type jungler. Now, I sacrificed the early objectives, like one dragon early and one rift herald early, to just gain a massive amount of jungle tempo on him. And now he's about 100 farm behind four levels. Because I did that, because I consistently made sure that I took my farm, took his farm, and I got the opportunity to punish him. And yeah. With Dragon, you can block one of the auto attacks he does with your W to gain the double attack speed effect. So it goes from 35 to 70% in this case. This skills up the 50% bonus, which then skills up to 100% if you block something. So that's something to keep in mind. You can see 50 ability is at 33%. You can see how, how badly it diminishes, right? Be careful here, actually. 
I don't want to get hit the entire time for free there. I have my ultimate now. Make sure I block that. Here to Lulu so I can just walk up to her and kill her as well. Then we walk back because we are quite low HP, low mana. Syndra still has an ult. I don't have a spell shield for it. And that could result in some issues. Walking over these Mundo things will prevent him from picking them up or healing himself. But in this situation, we're going to take the back, probably. I can do... Actually, in this situation, I really should just... Uh, oh, I thought he threw that on me. I should just take his topside camps to stick to the same rule of punishing the enemy jungler as much as possible by not allowing him any of his own farm. I am fairly low on HP, but I can heal this back from the camp itself. Because I do have some life still on the Blade of the Rune King. But I can also uh, deny him even more. He can't fight me anyway, because he is pretty much four or five levels behind right now. So he's going to struggle with that regardless. He's going to probably walk up to his red here. He did not. Cool. Ult's still on cooldown, so I don't really have to look for an active play here. We're just going to clear this. Clear that. This would be too risky. The reason why is because these two are in base. Lux is bot laning. You just saw several enemies walk up towards top side. So I'd be in like a 1v3 like or 1v4 situation, potentially, depending on which it is. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. I have a blue trinket here. I have my ultimate. I can just reach this guy very easily. So he is out of position. This is targets you want to be looking for as much as you can. Um, if they walk off to the side like that, you just want to hunt them down. Doesn't really matter who it is, because with this Nocturne build, no, you lose. Uh, you win every single... 1v1, you don't lose any of them. There is no problem. Unless they're maybe extremely fed and you're not. That's maybe a moment you have to be careful, but yeah. As long as I do 203 damage, I'm going to keep hitting it. There it goes. I should be able to finish it off here. It's a little bit risky, but Warwick's dead, so I can't get hunted down. Does this guy want to kill me? I think I win this. That's a little bit awkward, isn't it? I do win that. Just way too much damage. This build does a lot of damage. Now, as I said before, this is the moment in time where you want to switch out the boots. Because at this moment in time, the ability haste, as you can see, doesn't really do anything anymore. Because I go from 37, if I sell the boots here, it's 29. And that's really not that much to lose when you can get a lot of value out of boots that will be more effective for you. They do have quite a bit of CC on their team. So I can definitely get the uh, mercs here. They also have quite a bit of magic damage, so the magic resist would be effective. And then to finish off this build, you're basically just going to look for tank items that will be very effective. Looking at this team, they have a lot of consistent magic damage. So the Force of Nature is going to be very, very good here. So that's an item we're going to be getting next. And then for an armor item, this can be really anything. You can get a Frozen Heart if they have a lot of attack speed based stuff. Uh, to get also a lot of ability haste, but the attack speed reduction is very, very good. It has a lot of armor in it. You can get the Thorn Mill for the healing reduction as well if you would need it. Or the random ones if you need crit reduction. You can also go Guardian Angel for a bit more offensiveness as well. But yeah, let's uh, look at the endgame stats here together as well. All right, so here for the endgame stats as well, uh, we ended up doing 20.9k damage, which is very solid. Um, yeah, highest, not the highest on my team. Uh, Tristana was in some more fights, I suppose. So yeah, true damage, it's about 2k, which is mostly coming from Kraken Slayer and Smite. Damage to objectives at 40k, obviously lost a little bit of objectives early damage wise. So yeah, it does have quite a good amount of damage here. But yeah, this should always, if you're playing jungle, you, this should always be the highest stat if you are the winning jungler. If you are the winning jungler and you don't have this, unless like the game has been played on the back foot the entire time and you manage to come back somehow, that, yeah, you should always have this the highest, if not for that specific situation. If that's not the case, that's definitely something you have to fix because that means you have to look more at the potential objectives that you can take to fix that issue. Healing done, 7.2k. Damage taken at 26k as well. This is by far the most. So quite good there. Self-mitigated damage at 18k here as well. Gold earned at 14.1k. Um, we ended up being level 15 with 209 CS. Compared to Warwick's level 11 with 99 CS. And this is due to punishing him. And a second, the, the moment I took the lead, prioritizing his camp rotation over my own. So I had the opportunity to deny him and create a bigger and bigger lead, which eventually ended up giving me a four level lead. 
and more than 100 CS lead. I have a 110 CS lead on this guy because I punished him by taking his scams on repeat the second I got the lead. I also took his scams, obviously, when he took the dragon because we knew he was bot side at that point. I could take his top side respawning. The more opportunities you get like that, the better it is for like scaling and farm champions. Trading early objectives for like that type of advantages is huge. So yeah, for the runes here, Lethal Tempo had pretty good uptime. Lost Stand did 500 damage. Lost Stand damage, um, it's relevant damage because the damage from Lost Stand kicks in or goes up when you are low HP. So it's in closer fights, this rune means a lot. If you are going Coup de Gras, for example, it will do more damage to targets on lower HP, but it's going to be less relevant in closer fights. And for the most part, you don't really have trouble killing anybody. So it's better to have the assistance in closer fights where you would need it compared to overkilling somebody that you wouldn't need it for, if that makes sense. Ultimate Hunter here for just Nocturne's ult cooldown. The Ultimate Hunter CDR stacks with the early CDR from your boots. And then the Ultimate CD Hunter CDR also stacks with like the eventual cleaver. And then you switch out your boots and then this CDR from this alongside one of these CDR items, your boots or your cleaver will give you a very, very solid ult cooldown that isn't overdoing it because you don't want to overdo it with the ability haste function. And yeah, that's really it for Nocturne. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to like button below. It helps me out quite a bit. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button below as well. And yeah, hopefully this was a good start to the beginner series. If you uh, feel like I for like should mention something else as well, be sure to put that in the comments. I will improve upon that if needed. And I'll see you guys in the next one tomorrow. Goodbye.